All nine, you are go all the way. Everything looks good. Roger. of Apollo 9 was more complicated than any previous NASA flight. The astronauts had to put the lunar lander through every conceivable test this side of the moon. McDivitt, Scott, and Schwaggart had originally been offered Apollo 8, the first mission to orbit the moon. They turned it down. Instead, they held out for every test pilot's dream, first flight of a brand new vehicle. To avoid confusion while communicating with two vehicles in orbit, NASA resumed the practice of allowing the crew to name their spacecraft. The command module, first spied in its blue plastic shipping wrapper, was immediately called Gumdrop. The LEM was nicknamed Spider. Step one would be to retrieve Spider from its launch bay, located just above the Saturn booster's third stage. Orbiting the Earth at nearly 18,000 miles an hour, this was an incredibly delicate maneuver. Astronauts en route to the moon would have to perform the same precision ballet at nearly 25,000 miles an hour. A short tunnel beneath the astronauts' feet linked the limb with the command module, turning two spacecraft into one. On day two of the mission, Rusty Schwaggart became the first person to enter a LEM in space. He found it ship shape, apart from the odd floating washer and other debris from the factory floor. So far, no space vehicle had managed to pass this ultimate test of cleanliness. With the increased mobility provided by the large Apollo spacecraft, many astronauts suffered motion sickness. Rusty Schwaggart was hit especially hard. He spent his first days in space violently ill and unable to function. The mission profile called for NASA's first two-man spacewalk. This would demonstrate the ability to get back to the command module from the LEM in case the docking latch failed. McDivitt was unwilling to put a space-sick pilot into a sealed helmet where nausea could be fatal. Unless Schwaggart recovered quickly, Apollo 9's primary mission would be scrubbed. Astronauts can be very motivated individuals. The next day, Rusty was back, and the mission was on. Every space mission is hazardous, but Apollo 9 presented its crew with dangers never encountered before. The moment of truth came when Jim McDivitt undocked from the command module. The single spacecraft became two as Spider moved away from Gumdrop and off into space on her own. The thing was, is that was the first time anybody had flown in space in a vehicle that couldn't come back to Earth. So, you know, when you think about it in, in those terms, Apollo 9, when uh, Jim McDivitt and um, Rusty Schweiker got into that lunar module and took off, separated from the command module, left Dave Scott behind and went tootling around a couple of hundred miles away. They had no way home other than with a successful docking back to the command service module. So that was a pretty gutsy thing to do in that sense. McDivitt and Schweiger spent the day flying Spider in orbit testing her abilities as an independent spacecraft. She turned out to be both graceful and easy to fly, 
something that could never have been guessed from our Earthbound simulators. The final test was a practice liftoff from the lunar surface, or as close as they could come to it in Earth orbit. They'd do it while simultaneously testing a device everyone hoped would never be needed, the abort button. Hitting abort instantly fired a bank of explosive bolts, severing all connections between the upper and lower stages. Less than half a second later, the ascent stage would flare into life. At 120 miles distance, Spider and Gumdrop were mere specks in each other's windows. Now it would take piloting skill and a new rendezvous radar to reunite the two craft. This was the mission's ultimate test. Only the command module could survive the fiery heat of re-entry. If Spider and Gumdrop couldn't dock, Dave Scott would be the only member of the crew going home that night. With this last critical drill completed, the mission was over. The Apollo 9 crew found no major difficulties with the LEM. Now all the pieces were in place. The next and last test would come just above the lunar surface, where the LEM would reveal her own dark side.